be. Well, good evening. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will be glad. And it is Pastor Jonathan McKnight. Welcome to our amazing prayer call that we're believing God for on tonight. My heart's desire is that you, as well as your family, that you are doing well. We are thankful unto God for his goodness, his mercy, his kindness, and his grace towards us. It is an absolute blessing for us to be able to share tonight and for us to be able to have this opportunity of dialogue, to be able to um, give God praise and give God honor and give God glory for he is good, he is worthy, and his name is awesome to be praised. I want to get ready to start out tonight for with a prayer, and we're definitely going to get into our call on tonight. We're going to be talking about prayer that touches God's promises and we definitely want to believe and know that God is going to do uh, great things out of our life. And we're just grateful unto God. So let's go into prayer now as we move forward into this prayer call. Father, we thank you for your love, your mercy, your kindness, and your grace, for your good, your God, and your word to be praised. There's nobody like you in all the earth. We ask you, O oh God, to continue to guide us and watch over us. We ask you to bless our nation, bless our world. As there are so many places, oh God, that need your help, need your guidance in the Ukraine and Russia and around the world, in different places where there is unrest, there's unsettlety, and God, uncertainty in many cases. God, I ask you, oh God, that we know where our help comes from. We ask you, God, tonight that if you will be so kind to be able to grant those, oh God, that need peace. Oh, God, need protection and guidance. I pray you bless this prayer call on tonight. Every need, uh, every desire, even those families who are going through situations in their life, we ask you to bless them now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. It is a blessing to be able to uh, definitely share with you on tonight, for God is good. He is worthy to be praised, and we're thankful unto God and why it's on my heart uh, tonight. Definitely want you all to be able to be in continual prayer for the Blair family. Uh, Deacon Blair uh, transitioned to be on with the Lord, and we definitely want you to be praying for uh, the Blair family, that God will give their family um, strength and that God will give them comfort in their time of need. So many people are suffering from grief. I can't begin to tell you, as well as the Rook family. Um, they definitely want to be praying for um, our leader, uh, America's ruling Ella David C. Rook. We want to be praying for that family, that God will give them strength in their time of need. An amazing man of God and definitely a friend to my father, and we want to uh, be praying for that family as well. Talking to you tonight about um, prayer that touches God's promises, prayer and that touches God's promises. We're just so grateful unto God, and we were talking about about the power um, that have we have with the ability to be able to uh, have the promises of God. We dealt with Numbers 23 and 19 last week. It was, God is not a man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, he'll make it good. And we know God is good for it. As he used to say, we, you, can, you can take that to the bank. In other words, his promises are sure, and we definitely want you to understand. When we think of this word promise, uh, so many times people uh, don't take that uh, seriously. They, they'll they say, I promise, but they really don't understand. The promise is a declaration of assurance that one will do a particular thing or something particular will happen. A promise also means that you can be assured that someone will definitely do, give, or arrange something to happen. Promises also means uh, to refrain from, in other words, uh, a legal binding declaration. And when we hear the word promise, we now have the right to expect. It's when God literally is almost, when God says it, if he promised, it is a guarantee. And one of the things about 
when we think of this word promise, um, it means that when he says he's going to do it, uh, he's going to do it. We dealt with the with the expression of um, sexual fervent prayer of the righteous. Um, we dealt with this word feel, which means F faith, and E is effectual and fervent. E again is expectancy. And when literally God allows his promises, there is no limits according to God's promises. The Bible says in Second Corinthians 1 and 20, for all the promises of God in him are yea and in him, amen. I want to talk about a promise. Tonight, and there's two scriptures I'm going to read. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews 10 and 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And when God promises something uh, to us, uh, we need to understand that we can expect it to happen. Uh, there is nothing wrong with um, expecting God to do something when he says that he's going to do it. Uh, so many times when we go through life, um, we we have to deal with so many things of expectation. You know, when we think of the when we think of the word, um, even. Uh, Politically, when we think about that, and that's definitely something that you have to really be in mind for of. And when we think about that, um, so many times when uh, somebody wants to be elected for a particular office, they make all types of uh, promises. They make all types of promises of what they're going to do when they get in office and what they're going to do once this happens and what they're going to do and once that happens. And so many times, the things that are promised uh, are something that we cannot count on because uh, they were promising uh, based upon trying to maneuver us to do something uh, for them. But the one thing that I love about God, and we should all love about God, is this. When God promises us something, we can count on the promises of God. There's a promise I want to deal with on tonight, um, and it comes from Romans 8 and 28, and we hear about it so much, but it starts at verse 26. It says, likewise, the Spirit maketh intercession for us. Um, we have an intercessor that God has promised us, and his son Jesus, and it goes on to say, the Spirit make it intercession for us, which groanage, which cannot be uttered. It's something that the Spirit promises to do when we pray to God in faith. And then it keeps on talking about the Spirit of intercession. And then it gets down to verse 28, something that we hear often. People like to quote, but I want you to understand. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. This is a promise to so them who are the called according to his purpose. I think one of the things that we forget about in the promises of God is when God promises us something, there is still a principle in the promise. I want you to say that with me right now. I know we might not hear each other right now, but there's a principle in the promise. There's something that when God promises us, and many times it's um, contingent upon uh, we doing our portion. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Contingency principle. The Bible says he that cometh to God must believe. I'm in Hebrews 11. That's a principle. Believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So the principle for me is to believe God and to seek God and stand firm in faith. And the promise is the reward will come. Now, I don't want you to think that God cannot do certain things only if you do because he's sovereign. He has all power. 
The Bible says he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. But I want to talk to you for a few moments about the promise of it working for your good. We're in a season now in life. We're just in a season where so many things seem to be so uh, controversial, chaotic. We're living in a dark world. We're living in a a world to where people promise and then, without a doubt, they'll go back on their promise. And many times with no, with no regret, with no hard feelings, just uh, their word. You know, the old people used to say, your word is your bond. Your word's supposed to mean something. And so many times we, you know, even in, you know, with this war dealing with uh, Russia and Ukraine, um, they've come together several times to um, only to say we're going to have peace talks. And, and now it's to the point to where, you know, no one believes the other person's word. What's amazing about the promises of God they are yea and amen. Let it be so. It will come to pass. And one of the things for me that keeps me grounded in God is I don't have a reason not to trust him. There is not a reason that exists in this world today to not believe God. There is not a reason that I can think of neither have I experienced to where I've had to question God about his word. His word is solid. Sure, it's guaranteed. It's so powerful until the Bible says, before one jot or tittle of my word failed, heaven and earth will pass away. So so God, even though I know and I... I shared with you last week that depending upon um, your perspective theologically, there are between six up to 8,800, 6,000 to 8,800 um, promises in the Bible um, between Old and New Testament. And there's so many things that the Word says. I, I'm thinking about the uh, Romans 4 and being fully persuaded that what He promised. He also is, and he is capable to perform what he promised. There is no slackness in him. There's no weakness in him. He's God. He's all-knowing. He's all-powerful. I'm feeling the anointing while I'm talking about him because he promised us some things. But tonight, there are a lot of people wondering how it's going to end up, how it's going to work out. Where is it going to go? Is it worth it? Will it work in my favor? Will it work in my good? Well, one of the things I want to do tonight is I want to be able, uh, in the midst of this, I want you to look at verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit, Romans 8 and 26, helpeth our infirmities. So first of all, we need to understand that the infirmities, those old things that I like to use this, this expression, infirm, those things that are deeply rooted and embedded in us that we need help with. For likewise, the Spirit helpeth thy infirmities. The Spirit can help the things that you can't get over or get through, those things that are deep within us that we need strength. For we know not what we should pray for as we are. That's why the Bible says we need to pray in the spirit because sometimes, let's be honest, every one of us probably at one point or one um, juncture in our life that we prayed about something, we thought that it was something that, you know, was good for us. We thought it was something you might have prayed about a job. God gave you the job. And then when you got on the job, you just wish God wouldn't give it to you. You got to pray about the vehicle and you didn't know it was going to be at this cost. You might have prayed about this or prayed about that. So many different things we prayed about. And you can come to the conclusion, well, God, I need your spirit, even in my prayer time. But we know not what we should pray for as we all, because we don't know how it's going to end up. 
for the spirit itself make its intercession for us. Here's how it's going to work for our good. When we allow the Holy Spirit to be the prayer leader and not just our emotions. That's why the Bible says, in all our ways, acknowledge him, Proverbs 3. He will direct our path. How does he direct us? He directs us by his Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit prays, the Holy Spirit does not do or ask for something that's contrary to the will of God. Or the Holy Spirit is not going to ask God to allow something that can bring a demise to you because the Spirit is our leader, our guide, or our comfort. The Bible says in the book of John 14 that it's the comforter. But the Spirit itself make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Verse 27 says, here's why we want to pray in the Spirit, because he, meaning the Spirit, that searches the hearts, knows what's in the mind of the Spirit. The Spirit knows what's best for us. Because he make it in a session for the saints according to the will of God. Man, it sounds like there's so much safety in that. So when the Spirit, when we pray and let the Holy Spirit lead our, lead our prayer life, the Holy Spirit is not going to ask God to do anything that's contrary or contradictory to his will. So if we allow the Spirit to pray for us, if we allow the Spirit to pray through us, then we can expect the promises of God. And guess what happens when the Spirit prays? Not when Jonathan McKnight prays, not when I, my emotions pray, not when my feelings pray, not when my hurt prays, not when my anger prays, not when my unforgiveness prays. Not with my just warning worldly possession praise. But when the spirit prays, it knows what's in the heart and the mind of God, and it knows what's the will of God for our life. And when we let the spirit pray and let the spirit be the intercessor, guess what happens? And we know. When the Spirit's praying, we know that all things, my God, is going to work together for the good. A lot of people just like to start at verse 28. Well, Romans 8 and 28 says, and we know all things work together. No, 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 no. Let's back up to 26. Likewise, the Spirit make it in a session for us. In other words, in your prayer life, there has to be a posture of humility. Not to just your wish list, not to just your bucket list, not to just your dream board, but to what the Spirit wants for your life. Because the Spirit is going to pray the will of God for you. That goes back to Jeremiah 29 and 11. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil. I know the expected end. I already know I have a plan for your life. I have purpose and destiny for your life. But you got to make sure that you don't want what you want so badly until you're willing to not let the spirit take over your prayer life. Sometimes the spirit, you might want one thing, but the spirit might not want that for you. Because that's what the spirit is doing. It's praying according to the will of God. A lot of people say, oh, I want to be in the will of God, whatever. I want to be in the will of God. But you got to make sure that your will is not fighting his will. Or your way or my way or our way is not fighting his way. It is absolutely crucial in this year, in this time, in this world, in this season, and you want to pray according to the will of God. Even if the Spirit of God says not now. He didn't say not at all. Sometimes he'll just, he'll, sometimes God, I found this out. And I'm just going to say it off the cuff. Sometimes God will see if you're just a spoiled brat child. Sometimes God will see if you don't get what you want, when you want it, how you want it. He's going to check your posture. Is God, you know, people will get people have enough nerve to sometimes get an attitude with God. 
Now, you got to be born a man that lost it. You don't get an attitude with who wakes you up in the morning, who puts breath in your body, who controls your life. You don't get an attitude? I don't think so. The devil is a liar. Sometimes God will not answer you right away just for you to find out about you. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching real good. I'm teaching real good. I'm, I'm getting ready to pray for you all right now because the truth of the matter is some people don't want to hear what God has to say. But before you can think that everything or all things, they said all things, that's what's so powerful about this scripture. The only way all things going to work, not some things, not every other thing, not hidden and missing, not every three things I got to, I got to try to regroup. All things will work together for good to them that love God. Love him enough to let his spirit, sure, you have a right to ask God. He said, if you delight yourself, you know, sometimes when you talk like this, people want to say, but the word says the word, there's no controversy of the word. There's a process in the word. There's a principle in the word. If you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. So, yes, you have a right to get what you desire in your heart. But if you delight yourself in God, your heart will not allow you to want something that God does not want you to have. Because everything that God has planned for your life is for you to have a better life. That's not to say you won't have problems. That's not to mean you will not have challenges or tests or trials or have to go through some things. And sometimes you want to say, you know, God, what's up? I didn't see this coming. I was blindsided. I was hit. And sometimes even when you pray in the spirit, that doesn't mean you're going to uh, dodge every test. That doesn't mean you're going to navigate and skirt your way around where you never are going to be tested or tried, that's not what that means. The Bible says the godly shall suffer persecution. But you can guarantee that all things will work together for the good of them that love God. Love him enough to let him rule our prayer life. Love him enough to be patient and still have faith when it looks like our life is on pause. Love him enough. Or even when the deadline had passed, it looked like if he would have done it whenever you wanted him to, you might not be going through what you're going through now. But the Spirit, hallelujah. And we know all things work together for the good to them that love God. And to them who are the called, to his purpose. To the people who wants his will more than they want their will. It's going to work for you good. The people look like everybody else went ahead of them. But the Bible says the last shall be first and the first shall be last. You need to understand that you don't have to be envious of nobody else. You don't have to be jealous of nobody else. What God has for you is for you. And God, we're going to trust your timing. That's one thing I'm going to pray about tonight. I feel led to pray about God's timing for our life. Not too early, not too late, not to miss it, not to want it before it's not prepared, but in your timing, God, in your Will, perfect, flowing, amazing will. That's what we want. Whatever you do for us, God, we trust your timing so you get the most glory. I'll say it like this, and I'll pray. You know the story of, of, of Lazarus. Jesus didn't come to the funeral. He started out being sick. Lazarus was a friend of Jesus. He stayed at their house when he came to. The Bible says Lazarus died and they buried him. Jesus showed up four days later. If Jesus would have came while Lazarus was sick, 
the level of glory would not have been the same if he were the king when he was sick. The level of glory was 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 literally intensified because everybody said it was over. And some people came to the grave in doubt. Some people came to the grave and many came to the grave in unbelief. Even Mary and Martha were not pleased with Jesus. There was a little touch, a little attitude. If you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. So we trust you to have power while he is living. But we don't understand while he is dead that you now show up. They knew him as the live Christ, but they didn't understand him as the resurrecting Christ. Sometimes people and sometimes God, people will conclude it's over, it's too late. People will conclude by what stage the cancer is in. It's at a certain stage, then they already say, well, it's not going to be long. In many cases, I'm not saying the doctors are not wise or the doctors don't have insight or not aware of I mean, when they see things enough and they see enough transitional cases, but they don't have the final say-so. I don't discredit them. Thank God we need doctors. They're great. But they don't determine whether or not someone can be healed, delivered, or set free. I want to talk to everybody that either has passed the deadline or close to one ending. It's not over to God says it's over. You keep your posture and your position with this mindset. That if God said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, he'll make it good. He has a plan for my life. And man's watch and God's timing Two totally different things. I'll say it two more times. Man's watch and God's timing is two totally different things. Last time, man's watch and God's timing is two totally different things. Final promise, Philippians 4 and 19. But my God shall supply all your needs, all your needs according to his riches in glory. He has you. He has us. And we're going to trust him. So we're going to make sure that we pray in the spirit so we can ensure without a shadow of a doubt that when we pray, the prayers that we pray touches God's promises because we're going to allow the spirit of God to be the head of our prayer life. Let's pray now. Father, we thank you, God, for your love, your mercy, your grace, your kindness, and your timing in our life. God, you're amazing. You do amazing things, and we love you, and we're so thankful unto you. Thankful that you continue to show, express, Lamentations 3 said, the mercies of the Lord, they are so new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. It says your compassion fails not. And we thank you, God, for another day. We thank you for this moment in time to where it's absolutely a privilege to be able to come boldly to the throne of grace. It is literally a privilege for me to be in Orlando, Florida, and to touch heaven. And we that are gathered together on this call Welcome you and thank you for being on this call with us on tonight. Somebody's overwhelmed. Somebody is depressed. Somebody's fighting oppression. I sense that tonight that some people are on their string of the breaking point. They need answers. They need direction. God, they need you. We all need you. 
And I'm asking you, God, being the loving, awesome God that you are, to order our steps. We're nothing without you. But through you, we can do all things. Spirit of the living God, be our chief and our primary intercessor. Holy Spirit, you pray. And I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus, those families who are suffering from grief that we've called out tonight, that you touch right now in Jesus' name. The work family, the Blair family. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for many that are sick, many that are hurting. I sense in my spirit right now, God, I pray for Sister Loretta Webb. She's in my spirit as I'm praying right now. Pray that you touch her from the top of her head, God, to the sole of her feet. Members have encountered incidents and accidents. I pray you cover them. Give them strength and cover their bodies now. Those unsaved loved ones, those unsaved friends, even those enemies, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that salvation will come. Repentance will come. And acceptance of Jesus will come. God, I love you tonight, and we love you tonight, but we want our family saved. We want our, those who are sick, whether they're in the hospital, whether they're in hospice, whether they're home or in urgent care centers or wherever they are, people who are fighting just for peace, people who are fighting for their sanity. I even pray for every autistic child that you touch them now, God. Touch our children in school and wherever they are and where they're going, whatever age, our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, legacy. I pray for salvation. I pray for protection. We need to be covered in this chaotic world, in this dark world, in this the evilness of man and woman that doesn't regard the sanctity and the moralistic value of life itself. We pray tonight in the name of Jesus, God, that you will release a fresh wind of your Holy Spirit and your holy power. Order our steps in wisdom. We need wisdom. We need to make the right decisions. We need to be led by your spirit. Your spirit understands from beginning to end, and it prays according to the purpose by which you have set for our life. We pray for your timing. Not to move on our own accord, but to move when and how you say to move. To move to where you get the glory, you get the honor, you get the praise. We need you, oh God, to speak to our hearts and our minds. Give us strategies to win. Strategies to walk in favor, in peace. We cancel every sickness and every disease. I pray for school campuses. I pray for our children. I pray for the educational fabric of our school system as a whole, I come against every spirit of moral decay in trying to use the educational platform to go against the sanctity of your word. I speak victory. Help those who are helping others, doctors, nurses, first responders, respiratory therapists, our military troops, and those who are fighting for their lives, those who are fighting for their nation and their countries, those who are fighting for their freedom. I pray for those, oh God, who, oh God, we're in a situation where we need to cover, be covered by your blood. Even in this pandemic, cover our bodies, cover our respiratory system, cover our breathing, cover our lungs, our nerves. Cancel all blood clots. We cancel diabetes, high blood pressure, any form of hemorrhaging, any form of stroke, heart attack. I speak healing over our bodies, and we say, by Jesus' stripes, we're healed. We thank you for angelic protection. We thank you for your power, your anointing. Deposit a greater anointing in our life. We thank you for traveling mercies. We thank you for safety. We thank you for protection over the roadways, the highways, the airways, the railways, however travel is, I pray for protection. God, we thank you right now for those who are dealing with lack and emptiness, those who are just 
oh God, up under stress and financial disarray and those who are just worried and need, oh God, a level of peace that, God, I command that you will supply their needs and take them into overflow, into more than enough. Come against, oh God, those who who are feeling like they don't have any reason to live. We come against depression, oh, depression, the suggestions and the demonic voices of suicide. We bind it in the name of Jesus. We speak divine provision from the north, south, east, and west. We decree and we declare overflow. We bind poverty. We bind lack and emptiness. And we decree, God, that you will release increase in the name of Jesus. Let God arise. All our enemies be scattered. We thank you, God, for being the God of our government, the God of our educational system, the God of our Supreme Court, the God of our political system, the God of this world. We come against foul corruption and demonic dark leadership. We speak victory in the name of Jesus. Cancel every generational curse every stronghold in our families and homes. Pray that there be havens of rest, peace, laughter, love, and definitely prayer. We speak now. We say this one time. Say that you are defeated. The blood of Jesus is against you, and we bind everything that is provoked and stemmed by you. The blood cancels it, and the word of God does the same. We thank you for victory, God. That he who the Son is set free is free indeed. And we speak, God, according to this word tonight and this prayer. We thank you and we praise your holy name. The whatsoever things we desire when we pray, we believe that we shall receive them and we shall have them. We ask it in faith, giving you praise, knowing that it's already done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I believe with all my heart that that prayer touched the promises of God. I believe his hand has moved. I just want to say this twice. God knows what's best for us. God knows what is best for us. I said this to God as I get ready to end this call. I said this to God the other day. I said, God, whatever you desire, whatever you want, I will not pressure you in no way, shape, or form for what I want more than what you want because I know it's safety in your will. I want you all to be blessed, be safe. We're still in a pandemic. I want you to know that God has us and all is well because the Spirit make it intercession for us. And because the Spirit is praying, we know all things work together for good. Them that love God. Be blessed, be safe, be wise. May God bless you. May God bless your families. Pastor Jonathan, good night. God bless.